Hey, we are going to take some time um, to specifically pray for you ladies. And I, I'm, can I just say, I thanks for being here today. It's, it's awesome to have you all here. Um, thank you, Mackenzie, um, for everything you're doing. I appreciate it so much. Um, my wife and I and several of us were over at the Harriet House yesterday with these girls. I was telling Mackenzie real honestly, I said, you know, those games, I was a little, I was a little hesitant at first, but those icebreakers were a lot of fun. And I got, got a chance to get to know a few of you ladies, and that was really cool. And thanks for being so open. And, uh, but just so you guys know, Mackenzie doesn't just serve over at this Harriet House full time. She has a full-time job with Salem-Kaiser School District. She's in a school. She's working just like the rest of us. And I just, I just want to say that because her commitment over here is huge. What she's doing over here is big time. And uh, I know for a lot of us, you know, like Sunday only comes around once a week, but she's got these girls 24-7 in this house. No offense to you ladies, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to give you girls a hard time. But I want to invite you, church, to make sure you're praying for Mackenzie um, Think about her, right? Maybe as a parent, when you're realizing, man, I need a break from these kids, you know, um, she might need a break sometimes too. So be praying for her, finding ways to partner with her. But I just wanted to make sure you guys understood that, that she lives over here, she serves over here, she's invested over here, but she's got a lot of things going on too, all right? So thank you, Mackenzie, and thank you for sharing with us this afternoon. Let's give it up for Mackenzie, please. Hey, I don't know... Um, this is a very uh, popular thing anymore, but um, it's, see, I don't hear a lot about the Trailblazers anymore. Is that, is that, or are there any Trailblazer fans even here? I mean, is that kind of a, there's, there's one, there's one, I saw her, it's okay. Um, you know, when I was in grade school, I was a huge Trailblazer fan. I mean, huge, right? This was like the dream days of the Trailblazers. And there, there was people like Clyde Drexler, and he was my favorite basketball player. This was even during Michael Jordan's rule and reign in basketball, okay? And I had respect for Michael, but I just felt like Clyde had class. I felt like, you know, he just, he brought something different to the game that others didn't bring. And so, man, I was just like in awe of this, of this basketball player. In fact, he had a real signature move. His was a slam dunk because he was a monster and he could do that, you know? I couldn't dunk because I just couldn't dunk, right? And so I would work all the time on that move, and he would dribble down the court, and with one hand, because of course he had monster hands, he just grabbed that ball, and boom, you know, slam that thing down. But I would work on that one-handed layup. All my basketball coaches hated it. They'd be like, stop doing that. It's terrible. But I wanted to be just like Clyde Drexler. In fact, um, back then, um, all my friends, and myself included, we had basketball hoops in the driveways, and we'd get together, and we would all practice our signature basketball moves from our, from our players that we were all in awe of. You know what I'm saying? And so that was just life. And I remember this one time, Clyde Drexler actually came to the Albany Heritage Mall, and we went there and got to see him in person. It was so cool, right? And I just remember that. It's really obviously impacted my life. Um, last week, we started a journey with Jesus um, through prayer. And this is kind of our focus right now. And one of the things we talked about last week is we talked about the fact that it's normal. It's normal to not necessarily be good at prayer. Okay? So I'm trying to take a little pressure off all of you to understand that we all struggle with communication because prayer, in its most simplest form, is communication with God. And I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I struggle in my communication with God. And so just understand that, that it is normal. You're not weird, right? We're, we all struggle from time to time in that communication. So and we talked a little bit about motives last week, but Jesus was so awesome. And on his Sermon on the Mount, he took some time to explain when he was asked, how should we pray? And he, and he started laying out some groundwork for you and I. And so I'm going to ask you to turn in, in your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6. And I'm just going to take a few minutes this afternoon because I think our real highlight today is this opportunity that we get to pray for you all. And we get to partner with you ladies in this next year of your life. Um, Mackenzie said something yesterday that really stuck with me, and I really appreciate it. She said, some of you girls have been here for longer than just this year. Some of you have just arrived. But she said yesterday, I'm quoting her, she said, let's leave everything that's happened up to this point behind, and let's turn our focus to the year that's ahead. And I, I really like that perspective. I think that's really cool, because I think too often, myself included, I get stuck 
worrying about yesterday or last week or last month or several years ago, and I forget the fact that God wants to move forward. Now, we should learn from the past. You know, we don't, that's why we have history, right? We, we shouldn't forsake the past, but we certainly shouldn't live in the past. We should live in the here and the now and looking forward to what lies ahead. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus just got done talking about motives. We're going to read here in verse, uh, verse 9 and through 13. Let's just take a moment here and read this together. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Hey, don't forget, we're having a little barbecue right outside these doors after our time here together. And we got hamburgers and hot dogs and cookies and chips. It's going to be awesome. And ladies, I hope you cleaned your rooms because Mackenzie promised us an open house. And so if you guys want to explore the Harriet House today. It's your opportunity to do that. I would encourage you to do that because you, you get to have a picture of that community that's happening over here 24-7. And uh, I'm usually terrified to go in there because there's so much estrogen in that room, you know what I mean? I'm just like, whoa, you know, whoa, wait, you know, that's, that's a lot, right? It makes me nervous. It makes me nervous. <laughs> so we're journeying with Jesus through prayer. You know, if, if we were to look at the Bible as being instruction for how to follow Jesus, I want you to think of prayer as the actual, actual relationship with Jesus, right? So if we're looking at the Bible as instruction on how to follow Jesus, I want you to think of prayer as your actual relationship with Jesus. Because otherwise, our, our faith would just be rules and regulations and, and ideas and good morals. But the reality is, is that God, the God of heaven, wants to have a personal connection with each and every single one of us. And that happens, that happens through prayer. That happens when we get alone with our Father. That happens when we connect with Him. That's why prayer is so significant. And I believe the enemy, the devil, he likes to work overtime to try to get us distracted, to try to get us discouraged, to try to make us feel bad about how we pray so that we won't communicate with our Father in heaven because the reality is when we communicate with him, oh my goodness, things are going to begin to happen in your life and mine. Because when we encounter him in those intimate, special ways, that's when he really begins to mold and to shape our lives. You know, yesterday, um, was my dad's 68th birthday, by the way, if you guys didn't know that. I hope he's not embarrassed that I told everybody that. But it's his 68th birthday. And today, by the way, is Carmen's birthday. Happy birthday, Carmen. Woo. Um, but I don't know about you, but um, by a little bit of ha happenstance, you know, selfishly, I'd ask my parents to watch our kids on my dad's birthday. Super selfish. So we come to the Harriet house. But then afterwards, we got to hang out. And we got to, my mom had made a, a a sugar-free apple pie that tasted just like normal apple pie. It was amazing. I want some more, by the way. But anyway, we got to hang out for a little bit, and it was so cool because we just got to be together, just hanging out. Have you ever had those moments before where maybe you're sitting with your mom or your dad or somebody in your family, you're just hanging out, and you just, you're, it's just like it's not about what you said or, or even what you accomplished. It's just about being, right? And so this, what's interesting is the first thing that we find out here is Jesus says this, he says, he says, therefore you should pray like this. He says, our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. So we're going to talk about that here for a minute. So this is, I feel a little pumped up, so hang, just bear with me for a moment here. That's what happens when you worship God. You just, you just get excited because of what he, who he is and what he's done. Um, but this is kind of a part one of a how-to on prayer. And so we're just going to look at these couple little verses here for just a few moments together. And hopefully you're going to feel a bit encouraged, maybe inspired um, to, to spend more time in prayer, right? And so Jesus wanted to lay kind of a, a bit of a roadmap, right? I don't know about you, but when I'm driving somewhere, which I do a lot these days as a contractor, um, I, love my, I love my cell phone because I can punch an address in. It's funny when I'm talking to a client that tries to explain to me where they live. I'm like, that sounds great. How about you just give me your address and I'll get there, right? They're like, but you don't understand. It's really hard to find. I, I'm pretty sure I can find it. You know, I'll punch it into my phone here, and I'll, I'll get there. In about 
nine and a half out of ten, I'm there, right? It's not a problem. Well, Jesus wanted to make sure that you and I had a bit of a roadmap when it comes to how to communicate with our Father in heaven. And so I want to talk to you about this thing called approach. Have you ever met somebody or maybe maybe there's somebody in your life that you have to prepare yourself on having the right approach when you go to interact with this individual? Can you think of somebody like that in your life? Um, I think back to uh, about 2001, so a few years ago. Um, my wife and I were attending at Chemeketa Community College. That's where love happens, I'm just saying. And um, anyway, I had met her, and she was in my math class. And then I also found out she was in my Spanish class. And so, you know, I was keeping my eye on her, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it was just, it was really an interesting time in my life. And I thought she, I mean, I was like, man, this girl is beautiful. And I really want to meet her. and I really want to have conversations with her. But I was terrified. You know how it is, guys. You know, we struggle with those kinds of things, right? It's hard talking to girls. And uh, so I had to work on the right approach, right? Because how many of you girls know that if the guy comes up with the wrong approach, what's your answer going to be? It's no, right? So it's kind of a big deal. If you crash this plane, there might not be another approach, right? If you, if you go to land and it just blows up, you're done, man. You might as well move on, right? So it's kind of a big deal. And, and I say this because I want you to understand that when we approach our Father, it's, it's kind of a big deal. See, first of all, you have to understand something. The Hebrews, they were uncomfortable even saying the name of God. They had such reverence and fear, and some of that came from their encounters with God, but they understood that God was able, I mean, he was God, and they just weren't, they weren't willing to even use his name because they had such awe for him. But yet Jesus makes this statement here. Jesus says, our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. And so the first thing I want to I remind you of is that I think Jesus brought a level of intimacy and closeness to understand better for you and I when it comes to prayer. And number one, I want you to realize he's not your God, he's our God. He is collectively our Father in heaven, right? And and this isn't so much about his location, it's just identifying the fact that God is above all things and over all things. And there's this invitation, and I want you to know, next time you think about praying, I want you to recognize that it's your Father in heaven who loves you more than anybody else on this earth. He loves you more than anybody else will in all eternity. In fact, he loves you so much that he sent his son to die on a cross for you and for me just so that he could have an opportunity to have relationship with each and every one of you. So when you start thinking about your father in heaven, I want you to know that father is on your side. I want you to know that when you call out to his name, he is there ready and waiting and listening. And he's excited to hear about the things that are going on inside of your life, even though he knows all of them before you even engage in conversation. So that first thing we see here is we approach him as we're approaching not just God, and he is God. He always will be God. Don't mistake that. But Jesus said, our Father who art in heaven. So our approach is really important, right? So he's not just our father, but it also talks about, he says, your name is to be honored as holy. You know, sometimes children like to barge into the room. You, you may not have kids, but I think you can appreciate this. You could be, my wife and I could be sitting down having a friendly conversation about life or business or love or whatever, you know. And the kids, you know what they do? Without any regard for what's happening in the room. They just come barging in full speed ahead. Hey, mom, dad, can we do this? Hey, mom, dad, can we have this? Ah, You know, it's just loud, right? It's not the right approach, is it? They haven't learned the art of, how to work mom or dad yet. Today, Caleb was working on it a little bit. He really wanted to ride his bike. And we live on a hill, unfortunately. And it's death one way and a curve the other way. And so if you're not careful, there's cars ripping around the corner. It's just, it's not the best setup, okay? It's not ideal. But you know what? God gave it to us, so I'm okay with it. 
right? But he was working it for a while. He was trying on his a new approach on how to get his way. So I want you to understand something. Our, that approach really matters. And when you're going before God, understand, don't go barging into his front room. Understand that, yes, he is your father, and yes, he loves you with an undying love, but understand he is still the God of heaven. He is still the creator of all things. He is over all things. All things are subject to him, whether they realize it or not. The Bible tells us that one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. You see, he's still God. And the thing that we need to grasp here is on this part of the approach is, yes, he desires intimacy and closeness with you. But it's also coming from a place of reverence and awe for who God is. You know, I told you about Clyde Drexler, and, you know, he was pretty impressive, man. He was dream team all the way, right? You know, he was kind of a stud. And I did have a little bit of an awe factor for him when I was in grade school. But I want to encourage you to find your awe factor for God. I want to encourage you to find that place where you could step back and just close your eyes. Because understand, prayer isn't always about many words. Prayer isn't always about a length of time. It's a posture of humility. It's coming before an almighty God and recognizing that he desires to have that closeness and that intimacy with you. But yet you're going to give him the reverence and the awe that he deserves. And this is where it's so important for us to discover more about who he is. You know, I often reflect on my testimony because it reminds me, it reminds me that everything I have today, everything that I am today, it all belongs to him. It's only because of him. We got to learn to have the awe factor of our father who is in heaven. Man, I said I was going to be quick, Mackenzie. I think I lied. All right, we're we're going to try to wrap this up here. And then he goes on to talk about this. He says, your kingdom come. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Let's talk for just a moment here about your kingdom come. This is kind of an important one. Do you know that when you read the New Testament scriptures, that often it says, that when Jesus was walking on the face of this earth, that the kingdom of heaven was near. Do you know it says that? Repeatedly, over and over again. I challenge you, read, read in the New Testament scriptures. You'll find it. The kingdom of heaven is near. Why? Because when Jesus was walking on this earth, the kingdom of heaven existed in the person we know as Jesus. All power and authority was on him, and in him the kingdom of heaven was near. And when Jesus was venturing around the land of Israel, he was constantly breaking down the spirit, the, 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 um, <laughs> the kingdom of darkness. Wow, that was rough. Sorry about that. But he was tearing it down all over the place. He was setting people free. He would cast out demons. He was healing the sick He was restoring people to life. He was doing all these things. Why? Because the kingdom of heaven was near. See, when we we pray, we begin to understand your kingdom come, we need to realize that that same Jesus that walked this earth is the same Jesus that lives inside of you and me. Do you know that? This same Jesus, he lives inside and dwells inside of our hearts and inside of our lives. And I want to tell you another story. Um, we found out this year with, with Isaac going into middle school um, that there are some very challenging uh, things that they're trying to educate kids with today, okay? Mackenzie knows all about it. And in the health class in particular, and I was a little nervous because I was thinking, oh, man, we are going to go to the school and I'm going to meet his health teacher. And I know it's not her fault, but it makes me want to not say nice things to her. Okay, I'm just I'm being really transparent here, right? I, I struggle with that kind of stuff too, and and I was like I was frustrated. We we opted him out of some stuff, but already some of the things that we're being told that he's being told, it's like we're having like these heavy heavy conversations every single day after school, trying to help him discover the truth about these things. And anyway, we went to that classroom, and I was sitting there, and I just everything inside of me wanted to just you know kind of blow up or say something rude or sarcastic or nasty or whatever, and I knew that wouldn't be good, right? That would not be helpful. 
But it was interesting because we were standing there, and I knew God was just speaking to me in that moment because God reminded me of something. He said, Stephen, you don't need to say anything. I want you to realize you just being here means that the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. Not because of who you are, but because of who dwells inside of you. You see, being in that room was representing the kingdom of heaven, okay? And I, and I want you to know something, that when I shook that, that health teacher's hand, it was like touching a dead fish. She was so nervous. She was so uncomfortable. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to continue to pray that the, the kingdom of heaven would be represented in that classroom. I'm going to continue to pray that God's will would be done in that classroom and in the hearts and lives of the students. And here's the thing. we got to recognize when we're calling on the kingdom of heaven, we are desiring for, for God's kingdom to have its will and its way here on earth as it is in heaven. So when you go to pray, I want you to be encouraged because the Bible also tells us that we do not war against flesh and blood, but we war against principalities and powers of the air. I know we can't see them. This is spiritual stuff we're talking about now. We can't see them, but he does. And I want you to know something. When you start praying and you start talking to your father who's in heaven and you start honoring his name and you start calling down his kingdom, I want you to understand God is effectively working on your behalf and mine. He's doing work around us. And finally today, your will be done. This is a tough one. God's will and desire needs to be top priority in our lives. It takes true humility to lay down our will and to pick up his. You know, Jesus taught in the Gospels, he said, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. You see, it's got to be his will over our will. So what is this, as we kind of wrap this up this afternoon, what does this look like for you and for me when it comes to our prayer life? I'm going to close my notes. We're going to get to praying for the Harriet House here in just a moment. What does this look like? First off, understand, remember we talked about it last week, how important it is for you to find time and space to be alone with God. Because I want to say what we're talking about here is personal prayer. We're really addressing personal prayer. Today we're going to practice corporate prayer, and we're going to pray over the hair house, right? We've practiced some corporate prayer here today as well. That's, that's, That's an important part too. But really what we're addressing here in this journey with Jesus through prayer is more about our personal prayer right now. So finding that space, whatever that might be, your car, sometimes the car is a great space. Instead of yelling at other people, you can just talk to God. It's awesome. Uh, The shower works, right? Maybe a space in your house, wherever you can find to get alone. You know, it's just about getting alone with him. And then it's about checking, remember, it's about checking our motives. Why, why are we doing this? Are we doing this to be recognized by someone or something? Or are we doing it to gain an audience of one? And then I want you to be mindful of the fact that there's a personal call out there. Jesus himself said it. I want you to pray like this. Our Father, who are in heaven. You have a personal, loving, heavenly Father that is waiting for intimacy. He's waiting for connection to be with you, right? And that's really important. And then we got to approach. Remember, our approach has to be to honor him. It has to be to praise his name. It has to be to lift him up and to exalt him and to thank him. In fact, sometimes that might just mean turning on a worship set and just listening and singing and rejoicing and thanking God for what he's done for us. Okay? And then it's realizing that we're asking, we're inviting his kingdom and we're surrendering our wills to his. Amen?